Welcome to our second video on combinations. In this video, we're going to explore combination problems where there are conditions and cases involved. Now, since these can be more complex, our second goal for the video is also to learn to use technology to help us solve these problems. Now, of course, we can always leverage our combination equation. So before we go any further, let's pause and just remind ourselves of the formula. So remember N choose R or N C R is equal to N factorial all over R factorial multiplied by the difference between N and R factorial. Recall that N is still representing the total number of objects that are available for us to choose from and R represents the number of objects that will be combined or chosen from that group of objects. All right, so let's jump into our first example. It says Tanya is the coach of a pole push team that consists of nine players. Five are male and four are female. Now, if you've never heard of this pole push game, I encourage you to look it up. It's a competition where teams of four compete against each other and try to push their competitors out of a circle. The team that's successful wins. Now, in this scenario, there is an all-male competition. So in part A, Tanya needs to create a four-person team that's chosen for the male competition. And then in part B, it says, how many different four person teams could Tanya create with two male and two females for the mixed competition? Okay, let's start with part A. In this scenario, we're looking to make an all male team. So the only players that we need to analyze in this scenario are the five male team members that are available to us. And we are going to create a four person team for the competition. So N is going to be equal to five and R will be equal to four. Now this is a simple situation. So we can just use the NCR formula. So N factorial over R factorial multiplied by the difference of N and R factorial. We know that N is equal to five r is equal to 4, so we can substitute those values in where appropriate. Now, I end up with 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 1 factorial. And if I simplify this or expand a couple of the factors, I can see that 4 factorial will cancel out, and I'm simply left with 5 over 1, which results in five possible combinations or five possible four-person teams for the all-male competition. Let's take a look at part B. In this scenario, we're looking to make a mixed team. That means we need two males and two females. Notice that I've really emphasized that word and. That's important. It indicates to us that we're going to need to use the fundamental counting principle here. So we're going to choose two males and two females to create this one team. Let's look at the male side of this team first. In total, we have five males to choose from and we're going to put two on the team. And we have four females to choose from and we are going to put two on the team which means we are going to have to do five choose two and four choose two. Now, instead of using the equation, let's bring in some technology here. We're going to use our scientific calculators to help us figure this out. All right, so we need to find the combination function on our calculators. Remember that you can use the Desmos scientific calculator if you don't have a calculator available to you. So I'm gonna scroll over and find the combination function on my calculator, and I'm going to press the combination function and then five comma two. Some of you might need to go five, choose two, it depends on your calculator. 
but I should come up with the fact that there are 10 possible combinations for choosing the two males on the team. And then if I do the same thing for the female side, I'm gonna go four, choose two, or I'm gonna select the combination function and then go four comma two, whichever works for your calculator, and we will come up with six possible combinations. So in order to figure out the total number of possible teams, I'm going to take the 10 possibilities for the males and so I'm going to multiply the t six possibilities for the females. So there are 60 possible mixed teams that we can make for the mixed competition. All right, our next example says that a planning committee is to be formed for a school-wide Earth Day program. Now, there's 13 volunteers to be on the committee, eight of those are teachers and five are students. It wants to know how many ways can the principal choose a four person committee that has at least one teacher on the committee. Now I've really emphasized a word here, at least gives us a really big clue about how we might need to analyze this problem. Since I've noticed this word at least, that tells me that there are a number of different cases or scenarios here that I'm going to need to analyze or take a look at. There's a lot of different possibilities for these committees. So let's look at the first case. So it says there has to be at least one teacher. So let's start there. The first case would mean there's one teacher and three students would fill the other spots. Or in case two, we could have two teachers and two students. Or in case three, we could have three teachers and one student on the committee. And the last case would be if we have all teachers and no students. Now in each of the scenarios, I'm going to have to choose a teacher and students, so I'm going to have to use the fundamental counting principle. But because I've got a number of different scenarios where I've got case one or case two or case three and so on and so forth, that indicates to me that I'll need to total all of those possibilities up or I will add all of the possibilities for each of the cases. Okay, so let's go case by case and we'll identify N and R. So in case one, there would be eight teachers to choose from and we are going to choose only one. And there are five students to choose from and we're going to choose three. So that would be eight choose one times five choose three. And then in case two, we're going to choose two of the eight teachers, but only two of the five students. So we would have eight choose two multiplied by five choose two. And I'm sure you can see how this is going. In case three, I'm gonna choose three of the eight teachers and only one of the five students. And in the last scenario, all of the committee members are teachers. So I've got eight choose four, and just for fun or just for clarity, I, ch I threw in that there are zero students. Now, there's only one way that I can choose zero people, so that's gonna be equal to one. You don't even necessarily need to include that. So if I go through and I use my calculator function to help me calculate all of these, I should get 80 possible combinations for committees in case one. There's 280 possibilities for case two, the same for case three, and 70 possibilities in case four, where it's all teachers. So to figure out the total number of possibilities, I would just add them all up, and I would get 710 possible committees. With that example, that brings us to the end of our video. So let's summarize what we've learned. So we've explored a variety of combination problems where we had to look at conditions and cases. 
And when we looked for keywords such as at least, at most, at minimum, etc., we needed to make sure that we analyzed all of the different possible cases. And as these problems got more complex, uh, we found that it was useful to leverage technology instead of always uh, using the equation.